In section 3.7, we're asked to find the slope of the tangent line at any point of the equation x squared plus y squared equals 16. And of course, we know this to be a circle with a radius of 4. Well, when we're trying to take the derivative of equations that aren't functions, you know, this fails the vertical line test. It passes two points uh, on, any, on, on several vertical lines. Uh, when this happens, when we're trying to take the derivative of equations that are not functions, we run into some issues. Let's see what would, uh, how we would get y by itself. Here we would minus x squared. And then we would take the square root of both sides. And of course we'd have plus or minus when we take the square root of both sides of an equation. Now here's why you don't have a function, because we have a plus and a minus. So to find the derivative of this is somewhat confusing. Uh, because it's not a function, but we have ways around this, and the way around it is called implicit differentiation. Now, in this case, we can get y by itself, but let you know we don't have a function, and there's another situation where we just can't get y by itself, not uh, not easily at least. So, to avoid all of this hassle, implicit differentiation really solves it. Now, we're going to assume that we don't know what y is, but we know that it happens to be a function. In this case, it's actually not, but let's assume it was. Well, if y represents a function, if we take the derivative of y, it's uh, y prime, but then times the inside, which would be dy dx. So here's the derivative of just y, the outside function, but then the derivative of some function that y represents. So here's how you take the derivative of this function implicitly. If we're taking the derivative of something in x, we just take the normal derivative, 2x. But if we're taking a derivative of y now, we're saying that y is some function that we don't know what it is. So the derivative of y squared, or the derivative of the outside, would be 2y, and the derivative of the some inside function here is just times dy dx, because we don't know what that function is. And then the derivative of 16 is 0. Now we're just interested in finding out what dy dx is, the derivative. So we have 2y times dy dx equals negative 2x, minus 2x from both sides, and then divide by 2y. So dy dx equals negative 2x divided by 2y. And of course the 2's cancel out. So the derivative of this circle, or the slope of any tangent line on the circle, is based on both x and y. So we can pick a point on the circle. <clears throat> Let's say we're x, uh, or the point 0, 4. Uh, and we can see that the slope of the tangent line is 0. Well, if you plug 0, 4 into the x and the y, we're going to evaluate this at uh, 0, 4. Then you plug 0 in for the x, and 4 in for the y, and you can see the slope actually is 0 uh, when x is 0, and when y is 4. So let's practice some implicit differentiation. The bottom line is, when you see a y, when you're doing derivative with the y, you just have to include a dy dx, and that comes straight from the chain rule. Derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of this non-function, because if we square rooted, we have the plus or minus, is 2y times dy dx, and the derivative of x is just 1. Now we just have to get dy dx by itself, and in this case, it's just one step dividing by 2y. So there's the derivative, 1 over 2y. Now the derivative, or the slope of the tangent line, is based solely on y and not on x. The derivative here, let's see, we've got to do implicit differentiation on this. So we have two pr a product of two functions. So on the left side, we have the first times the derivative of the second, which is cosine y. But we just took the derivative of y, so we have to multiply by dy dx. So there's first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is just 1. So there's really a 1 there. Equals 2x, not 2x, excuse me, the derivative of 2x, which is 2, and then plus 3, but that's the derivative of y, so we have another dy dx. Now the trick is, I have two dy dx's, I have to get them on the same side and then factor out. So I want to get 
sine of y on the le uh, right, and uh, this 3 dy dx on the left. So I'm going to minus sine y, and I don't need the 1 anymore, from both sides. So we have x cosine of y dy dx equals 2 plus 3 dy dx minus the sine of y. So now I have to get the 3 dy dx over to the left side. So we're going to minus 3 dy dx from both sides. So I have x cosine of y dy dx minus 3 dy dx equals 2 minus the sine of y. Uh, we can factor out a dy dx now. dy dx factored out leaves x cosine of y minus 3. And then finally divide by x cosine y minus 3. So we divide both sides by x cosine y minus 3. So the derivative of this function implicitly is 2 minus sine y over x cosine y minus 3. And the derivative of the function is based on the values of both x and y. Here's another example. Anytime we take the derivative of y, we want dy dx. So the derivative of the left-hand side is 2 dy dx. The derivative of x squared is still just 2x. And now we have, uh, let's see, plus cosine of xy. There's the derivative of the outside uh, times the derivative of the inside, which is first, times the derivative of the second, which is 1, but then times dy dx, because I just took the derivative of y, plus the second times the derivative of the first. And the derivative of the first is just 1. So I have to get the dy dx's on one side. So we have 2 dy dx equals, that's an x, 2x plus x cosine of xy dy dx. So I'm doing the distributive property. I have to distribute this cosine xy through plus y cosine of xy. So the distributive property is done. Now I just have to get this x cosine xy dy dx over to the left side with this other dy dx. So we have 2 dy dx minus x cosine of xy dy dx equal to 2x plus y cosine of xy. Now I can factor out the dy dx, do a little division, and we are done. So dy dx times 2 minus x cosine of xy equals 2x plus y cosine of xy. And now I just have to divide. So we have dy dx equals 2x plus y cosine of xy all over, that's this right here, that's that, over this one with the minus. So we have 2 minus x cosine of xy. Whew, that's a good one. But there's the derivative of this function implicitly. And it's not that this isn't a function. I don't know whether it is or isn't, quite frankly. But we have to get, if I had to get y by itself, that would be extremely difficult. So rather than trying to get y by itself and have this nice you know, polynomial that we're used to working with, this, that's not going to be possible with this one. It's much uglier than this nice polynomial. So rather than worry about getting y by itself, we can take the derivative implicitly. So we have uh, the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and then the derivative of the product of these two functions, x and y. So we have minus first times derivative of the second plus the second times derivative of the first, and then we have plus 2y dy dx equals 0. The derivative of 7 is 0. So we have 2x minus x dy dx minus y plus 2y dy dx equal to 0. 
Well, anything without a dy dx, we got to get to the other side. So we have negative x dy dx uh, plus 2y dy dx equals uh, y minus 2x. I'll add the y to the other side. There's the plus y and minus the 2x. There's the negative 2x. Now we can factor out dy dx and we get negative x plus 2y equal to y minus 2x. Finally, the last step is division. So we have y minus 2x over negative x plus 2y. And there we have it.